black tip or not, it jumped. It flew through the air three times, and it is huge. It ate an entire weak fish this big, I guess in one gulp. I was playing around, I was playing around with the belt and everything. I've been out here for hours. I've been out here for hours. And finally, I'm playing with the belt and just stuff like that. And I look back at the dang rod is just bent over and he's flying through the air. Woo! I got some serious drag on him and he ain't budging. No chum. I was taking pogey oil, what I had left. A little bit in a bottle. Mixing it with water and dumping it out there because I don't have any chum. So, I've been doing this whole, everything today. This is my third bite. My only connection though. Woo! This thing's got some shoulders, baby. There he goes. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. right there okay I don't think I had a chafe guard on that it's not my crimp that's right where I had a big snap-on swivel with a bite leader about 24 inches of 480 pound cable oh man I just learned a valuable lesson. I just learned a valuable lesson. All my wind ons. Well, maybe I think I can. I might have. I got to look at that one over there that I had a, uh, you know, a chafe guard around there. Oh my God, that was a big ass fish. That was a big ass fish. I mean, you can see, I was making no ground on that thing. All right, well, 
let's see. There's what he just ate. A whole weak fish. There's my rig. There's the same spot right there and I got a weight on it. And all I had was these plastic chafe guards right here. See that right there? That's where that was. And it broke. And the line broke. Alright, well. No more of that. Damn! That was a monster shark. But that's what he came up and ate right there. I have this weak fish, it's gutted, the hook going around right, right to there, and then to hold the, the head to the, the cable, I rubber band it, and of course I got a breakaway rubber band here, and then I had my balloon. Uh, about 25 feet up the line with this weighted taking it down probably at least drifting I'm, I got a fast drift going on here uh, I'm drifting with the wind and the winds pretty strong so that was taking it down all right no chum no nothing been flying by the seat of my pants all day, and there he was. That's what we're fishing for. Hey folks, Captain Dave here. After that last video that you just watched, all I had, as I said in the video, was a little bit of just pogey oil that I kept mixing with water and just tossing out. I couldn't get any uh, pogies to use as chum or anything like that because they were so scattered out when I went to go look for them on the beach. Plus they were real small. Uh, as you know, I've got a chum tube. And I got a chum chopper that goes in here. So this is, you know, it's usually free chum. Well, I just got back from Strike Zone where I got me a bag to test out here. A sample bag to test out the Bloodstream Predator Chum. And what this is, is it's got some mixtures in it of solids and a sinking oil that's the big deal today is all your pogey oils uh, your menhaden oils um, you got oil and then now they're making it so it sinks which is really good because you know where are the fish they're down underwater they're not up always on the surface this here I'm gonna be trying out there's nothing more I like than doing some R&D research and development I'm going to try this out and let them know how, how it worked out for me over at Strike Zone. And um, so I'll be mixing this up. I've already got my place to put it. I got my chum tube here. Got my got chum chum tube. And then here is the actual sinking oil. 
It's the Chum Cloud oil. Okay. It's kind of, to me, it looks like oil mixed with some of the old uh, Menhaden milk. So, I got that. And, of course, the easiest way is just to do the uh, drip bag hanging off the side. There's probably times when all I'm going to ever need when I'm shark fishing is just the drip bag. Just to get the smell out. I might not really need chum, you know. Um, so I got a drip bag. I'm not, it's nothing but an IV bag. You put that in and you can control how it drips into the water. Then, since I learned my lesson, I went and got the, I guess you'd call them thimbles. Uh, I went and got the right size thimbles, all metal, because if you remember in the video, what broke, which I think I still have it in my pocket. Yeah. What broke was that right there. I had one of these which goes inside and it protects your line from chafing because I've got a snap swivel going in there. I had a plastic one, a come, a come to realization, I mean I had it on the other rig as you saw in the video. I had a plastic one in there but obviously, obviously the plastic one broke so I went with metal and now I got the right ones. So, that little experiment yesterday out by myself in the wind and the, in the seas uh, kind of did teach me something. So, I'm going with those. No more plastic. I had plastic. That's the reason I, I used them. That's the only reason I had the pl little plastic thimbles on here. So, that's just a follow-up. I kind of can't wait to give this a try. Believe it or not, what's in this bag, which is a combination of different uh, materials uh, it's a 10 pound kit should be the equivalent that says here of 200 pounds of bloody chum 200 pounds of bloody chum so um, what it what the kit contains is a dry mix a mixing bag the chum cloud liquid and the instructions. I've already got some more Chum Cloud liquid. So, there you go. And all I have to do is make those Chum Cloud balls, put them in my Chum Tube. So that's just a little follow-up. It's, it's getting to be the shark in time, folks. Running and gunning behind the shrimp boats. Then we go off and we do our own thing. Looking for the monsters. It takes patience. Fortitude. This isn't one of these instantaneous gratification things all the time, especially if you're looking for the monster. Alrighty, that was my follow up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you'll be able to see more and hopefully some video of when this starts producing.